Welcome back to another Kotlin Bytes video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to convert an object, in this case coffee, into a byte array. Specifically, in this case, only one byte. And then we're going to decode it back into the same object. Let's get started. I find it fascinating how much information you can store in just a couple bits. And so that's what we're going to show you here. So I have this coffee object that takes in a coffee type. Uh, and we have a couple different options here. We have cappuccino, cold brew, Americano, drip, espresso, latte, and nitro. Uh, we'll do latte. Okay. And then a couple different roast types. I only have three here. Sizes, I actually have a lot of sizes, four sizes. I'll go tiny, the milk, I only have two um, types of milk right now, either no milk or milk. If I run this, you will see we have an input, which is the object that we created. And uh, we have the encoded values, so we encode this. And then I represent that as hex as well as binary. And then I decode it back into the original object. Uh, if the encoding is done properly, it should encode it back to the exact same object. And yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. The process I'm gonna show you today will only work with known values. You are able to transfer unknown values through binary. However, that requires a significantly larger amount of bytes and in this example, we're only using one byte. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, our coffee object here contains four different variables. We have our type, our roast, our size, and our milk. And these are all actually enums, which are defined down here. Our coffee type, our coffee roast, and size, and finally milk. So uh, each one of these are gonna be represented in binary. So if you have not seen my video on binary and bitwise operations, go check that out before watching this one, unless you're already comfortable, then of course continue to watch, uh, because we're going to be really diving deep into how binary and bitwise operations work in this episode. Okay, so how are we going to convert these four enums into essentially one byte? Well, I've kind of outlined what's going to happen here off to the side. Uh, so the type has seven options. We have seven different coffee type options and we're able to contain that into three bits. The roast has three options um, and we can store that up into two bits. Uh, so two bits can store up to four items and so that's why the sizes we can also hold in two bits. And one bit can contain up to two different items options because one bit is either zero or one. For example, three bits would be two to the power of three, which would be eight. So with three bits, you can hold up to eight options. And so, yeah, if we then use our bits strategically, we should be able to create the most compact binary string to represent our data. Therefore, here's how we're going to construct it. We're going to first represent the type. The type is going to be used is going to be using the first three bits. Uh, now remember, one byte contains eight bits, so we've already used a lot of it. Um, the next section is going to contain our coffee roast. The next little section will contain our size, and the final bit is going to be our or actually it's just whether or not milk is available. And as you can see, we have a total of eight bits here. And that's how it's gonna be parsed. So we're gonna first encode it this way so that the first three bits are representative of the, of the type. The next two bits are the roast, the size, and then finally the milk. So in this case, a one in the back here would represent milk is true. Zero would mean no milk. And in this situation, you can represent binary as, um, or you can represent a number in binary. That's really the whole point of this. Um, so 
zero one would be one. One zero would be two and one one would be three. And then for our fourth option, our fourth option would just be zero zero, which is zero. So we are at zero, one, two, and three. And likewise with this one, and this is very similar except now there's eight options. Okay, so we have to take a coffee object and we have to return a byte array. Uh, in this case, uh, we could just return a byte because our coffee object can, is contained within a single byte. However, I wanna try to keep this as generic as possible. And so it's gonna return a byte array instead. Uh, but that's, that's pretty simple because we could just return a byte array of, and then there's gonna be some integer that we're gonna convert into a byte. So we're gonna start off this um, this byte as zero, so just an empty byte. And we're gonna convert raw to a byte. Raw is just an integer. And so you are able to convert integers into bytes. Bytes just represent a integer, in this case an eight bit integer. Uh, when we convert this, this integer to a byte, we're only using the, the first eight bits of it. For our use case, it's perfect. Now, the first step is to apply the type. So the type is going to contain three different bits. And yeah, so we're going to add that to our raw integer. So we're going to say raw. It's going to equal raw. And then we're going to use the, uh, the bitwise operator or. And we're going to append the type. And we're going to take the index of the type. We're going to do one more thing to this. So we're going to wrap this in parentheses and we're going to shift this to the left. And the reason why is because these have to end up eventually to the far left of our byte. And right now, They are well, I won't use that, I'll use X's, because they could either be zeros or ones. Right now they're positioned here. And we need them to be positioned further to the left so that we can uh, write our next bit of information. And to do this, we're gonna shift them two bits to the left. The reason why we're gonna shift them two bits to the left is because our next set of data is two bits in length. And this will move these bits like that. That frees up the, the last two bits for our next operation. So if I duplicate this line and I change the type to roast, and we're gonna shift again two bits to the left. The reason why is because our next, our size variable is two bits. So we're gonna, again, shift two to the left. We're gonna finally add our size. And in this situation, we are going to only shift one. And the reason why we're only going to shift one is because, again, our last variable is only one bit in length, which opens up the last bit. And finally, we can add our milk variable. And we don't actually have to shift uh, this time because we're at the end. So it'll look like this. Okay, great. Um, this is actually all that we have to do. Um, we, we're writing to this integer variable by variable, and we're systematically shifting to the left so that we can fit as much information in, in this one integer as possible. Okay, now let's decode. Uh, to decode, I wanna first um, pull out that integer from the byte array, and to do that, I'm going to Uh, take the first element in this byte array, which is 
Well, it's because we only have one plate. And I want to convert it to an int. And ultimately, I do want to return a coffee object. And yeah, we're going to have a type, a rose, a size, and a milk. So let's add those here. Milk. Um, let's first get our milk. Uh, we're going to do this in a reverse order. And the reason why is because I find it easier to analyze a byte from right to left, but really it's up to you. Okay, so we're going to take our milk enum. We're going to find all the values. The values are going to come in, in either an array or a list. And so we're just going to find the index of the enum that we want to use. Um, since we've already to use the index in the encoding, we can just reverse use the index to find the value. So in this case, we're going to take our raw data. We're going to use the AND bitwise operator. And we're going to use the hexadecimal number just one. So actually, you can represent this as simply one. Um, or maybe 0B1 would be more fitting for this but it's typically a standard to use hexadecimal. So I'm going to keep that. That's going to retrieve the value for milk. Our next value is going to be size. And for this, we actually need to shift our data again. So we're going to shift it by one bit to the right because we're undoing everything. And we're going to do, we're going to apply an un signed shift right because we're only working with unsigned integers right now and because this is two bits we can represent that with a three um, again it might actually be easier to represent it as a binary um, you know what actually yeah i will <laughs> i will just represent this as a binary for you guys okay our next is a roast and we're gonna Shift three over, and we're going to mask it again with just these two bits. Finally, we have our type. We shift over five, and um, I'm, I'm getting these numbers based off uh, the addition or the sum of um, our variable bits in reverse order. So the first shift is whatever our milk was, Second one is the sum of these two. So now it's three. And our type shifting will require one plus two plus two, which is five. Okay, and this mask, binary mask is gonna be one, one, one. Alrighty, and that's it. So we just reconstruct this object. And there we go. That should be it. Now we can go test it. And look at that. Now, obviously, one one test doesn't prove that it's working correctly. So let's change some of these up. Maybe none. This is drip coffee, and it's a medium roast with a a medium sized cup. Okay, drip drip medium 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 and none. Awesome. And finally, let's analyze our final binary number. The first three values are 0, 1, 0, and this represents a 2 in decimal. So if we go to drip, we are on the second index, so 0, 1, 2. We took a medium roast, which means that these bits line up with the number 1, which is correct index number 1. Next two, also 1 for medium. And that's index number one. And finally, zero, milk none. And none is in the zero index. That's all I wanted to show you guys today. Thanks for watching. The source code's gonna be in the description, so check that out. Otherwise, have a great day.